Hello today's video we have the following content. Where are Huo Yuan Jia's descendants now? The two sons broke up in the 1930s, and the eldest grandson's family is already an Indonesian citizen. In the plot of the movie, Huo Yuan Jia's wife died of illness a long time ago. After he mistakenly killed Kin Yi, his mother and daughter were also killed. In the end, even he lost his life in the arena where he competed with the Japanese. However, in reality, are there really no descendants of the Huo family? 1. The second son who inherited his father's will, Huo Duong. According to the existing archival materials, Huo Yuan Jia did not have only one daughter as described in film and television works. In fact, Huo Yuan Jia and his wife had a total of five children, the boys were the eldest son Duong Zhang and the second son Duong as the eldest son, Huo Duong Zhang did not inherit his father's ambitions and never got involved in martial arts all his life. Instead, he stayed in his hometown in Yanjin with his mother and made a living by farming. However, Huo Duong ideas were completely different from his eldest brothers. Huo Duong was smart since he was young, and his grades were always great when he was in school. It is not an exaggeration to call him the hope of the whole family. Since his father Huo Yuan Jia was killed in Shanghai, Huo Dong has become a different person. Not only did he stop going to school, but even his gentle temperament has changed. Huo Dong has been obsessed with martial arts since he was young. Before he went to school, he always followed his father to practice boxing. Because of this, Huo Yuan Jia liked the second son very much. At that time, his father always conveyed this idea to Huo Dong. If everyone in our country practices martial arts and the people become stronger, then the country can become stronger. The hat of sick man of East Asia can be taken off. Although Huo Yuan Jia's grand ambition of strengthening the country and the race was not achieved at that time, in Huo Dong Jia's eyes, his father's patriotic idea was absolutely correct. So, after his father passed away, Huo Dong Jia, who was only 16 years old, resolutely gave up his studies and decided to inherit his father's will and finish what his father had not finished. Later, he and his uncle Huo Yuan King followed his father's apprentice Liu Hecheng to Shanghai to provide support for the Jingwu Association. With the arrival of the uncle and nephew, the Jingwu Association regained its vitality, its social reputation continued to improve, and more and more people came to join the association to learn martial arts. In 1923, Huo Dong wanted to expand the business of the Jingwu Association, so he decided to go to Nanyang to prepare for the Jingwu Sports Organization. In June of that year, he took a boat to Surabaya, now Indonesia, and through the connections of Chen Yingsen, the general manager of the Nanyang Tobacco Company, he contacted local overseas Chinese gentry and businessmen and persuaded them to develop sports. After more than a year of hard work, the Jingwu business in Nanyang gradually improved and the number of overseas Chinese who joined in to learn martial arts increased day by day. This made Huo Dong a little overwhelmed, so he called his nephew Huo Xiaozong in Guangzhou to Nanyang, thinking that he would help him. Huo Dong never thought that because of this decision, he would be involved in a lawsuit in the future, and this lawsuit directly turned him against his brother. According to the existing data, after Huo Dong went to Nanyang, he lived there and finally died of illness. However, in the early summer of 1935, Huo Dong returned to China. For a long time, his hometown Tianjin had not established the Jingwu Athletic Association, which had always been a concern for him. This time he came back, intending to rely on his own efforts to organize the Jingwu Athletic Organization in Tianjin. After returning to his hometown after many years, Huo Dong must go to see his mother and elder brother. When they met, the elder brother Huo Duongzhang immediately got angry because his son Huo Xiaozong did not come back with his younger brother. Huo Duongzhang had not communicated with his son for a long time. Now that he saw that his son did not return to his hometown with his younger brother, he couldn't help but feel a little puzzled. He asked his younger brother about his son's situation, and Huo Dong simply responded with a few words, which made Huo Duongzhang more suspicious. Not long after, he directly sued his younger brother to the court, saying that Huo Dong killed his son. In order to prove his innocence, Huo Dong had to hand over the evidence that his nephew was still alive to the court. There was a letter written by Huo Xiaozong himself. In the letter, Huo Xiaozong explained to his parents why he lost contact and why he did not follow his uncle back to his hometown. It turned out that the martial arts school he founded with his uncle closed down in the early 1930s due to various reasons. Since then, 
A Juo Xiaozong has separated from his uncle and gotta find a way to make a living. Later, he got a job as a physical education teacher in a local overseas Chinese school in Surabaya. This job is stable, but the income is pitifully low. In addition to the usual expenses of the family, A Juo Xiaozong has no money left. Life is so difficult, A Juo Xiaozong is of course embarrassed to tell his parents far away in China. Because he didn't want the two elders to worry about him, he never wrote to his family, so he ended up like this today. In April 1936, the court made a final decision of no prosecution for this case, but the brothers Huo Dong Zhang and Huo Dong broke up completely because of this lawsuit. In 1936, Huo Dong, full of despair, returned to Southeast Asia and never returned to China until his death. 2. The descendants of the Huo family have champions and propaganda ministers. Huo Dong has three sons and one daughter, two of whom decided to return to China to develop. After the two sons returned to China, they either worked in factories or returned to their hometowns to become farmers. If there were no unexpected circumstances, this branch of the clan would basically have nothing to do with martial arts. But the coincidence of history is so wonderful. After a few decades, the granddaughter of Huo Dong's eldest son Huo Yading actually chose the path of martial arts again. Later, this little girl not only got admitted to Beijing Sports University, but also won a martial arts championship for Tianjin at the 2017 National Games. She is a physical education teacher at Tianjin University of Commerce and the champion of the 13th National Games Health Kagan Team Competition, Huo Jinghong. According to Huo Jinghong herself, when she was a child, the martial arts of the Huo family was almost broken. However, when she was five years old, because her brother was not in good health and was always sick, her father sent her brother to a martial arts school to practice martial arts. As for herself, she would go to the martial arts school with her brother from time to time to practice martial arts. After practicing for a full three months, her brother couldn't stand the hardship and simply stopped practicing, but she became more and more excited. Later, the family focused on cultivating Huo Jinghong's talent in this area. She was originally talented and diligent, and finally with excellent results, she was successfully admitted to the martial arts major of Beijing Sport University. Although Huo Jinghuang is a descendant of Huo Yuanjia, she does not want to live in the halo of Huo Yuanjia, so in her daily life, she never talks about her life experience. Even her good friends only found out that she was a descendant of Huo Yuanjia from the news media reports after she won the National Games Championship. In 2015, Huo Jinghuang was the only one in the Huo family's young generation who practiced martial arts, so she naturally became the inheritor of the Huo family fist. It was also from that time that Huo Jinghuang began to practice the Huo family mysterious fist. At present, Huo Jinghuang promotes Lian Shao fist to the members of the Tianjin Business University Weshu team, and teaches it to interested students without reservation hoping to pass on the moves and spirit of Huo family fist in this way. In addition to Huo Jinghong, Huo Dongju also has a grandson named Huo Zizhang. Although he does not have the halo of national games champion like Huo Jinghong, he is the most outstanding propaganda minister of the Huo family. At the beginning of the article, it was said that the plot of the movie Huo Yuanjia made the Huo family extinct, but in fact, the descendants of the Huo family are everywhere. They can be seen not only in China, but also abroad. Therefore, Huo Zizhang and other descendants of the Huo family took the producer of the movie Huo Yuanjia to court in 2006. At that time, the lawsuit was a big deal, and major mainstream media reported it. When interviewed by the media, Huo Zizhang said honestly, I haven't learned the Kung Fu well, so I can't carry forward and pass on the Huo family boxing. But the only thing I can do now is to do a good job in publicity and reception, so that Huo Yuanjia's reputation can be spread more widely. At present, Huo Zizhang will speak on the stage as the honorary principal when the Jingwu School holds its opening ceremony every year. As Huo Zizhang said, he is not only the custodian of the Huo family historical materials, but also the promotion leader of the Huo family spirit. 3. The great grandson who is famous in Nanyang for his medical skills. Huo Dong's Hen. After talking about the Huo Dong branch, let's talk about the Huo Dong's Hang branch. As mentioned before, Huo Dong's Hang never practiced martial arts. He stayed in his hometown all his life and lived on farming. His son Huo Xiaozong went to Nanyang. Because of the situation at that time, 
He could only be a physical education teacher and lived a very difficult life. However, you may not expect that the descendants of the Huo family from Huo Duangsang's line are the richest among the descendants of Huo Yuanjia. Since being called to Nanyang by his uncle, Huo Xiaozong has taken his uncle as a role model and learned from him in all aspects of life. After a long time, he mastered the Huo family's unique bone-setting method. Trauma is a common occurrence for people who practice martial arts. Since ancient times, those martial arts families have passed down some medical skills that can treat trauma, and the Huo family's surgical bone setting is in this range. Huo Xiaozong's temperament is very similar to his uncle. They are both quiet and introverted, but their strengths are similar. They learn things very quickly and want to do everything to the extreme. After learning from his uncle for a few years, Huo Xiaozong's bone setting skills reached the pinnacle. Later, this man with a background in martial arts became a well-known bone-setting doctor in Surabaya. Huo Xiaozong's wife was an overseas Chinese named Yi Shunyang. The couple had a son and three daughters. The son was Huo Gong's Han, a famous doctor who later became famous in Southeast Asia. Huo Gong's Han was born in 1947, three years older than Huo's as Hang mentioned above. When he was five years old, he was severely asked by his mother not to learn martial arts because he fought with a boy. In theory, it is normal for little boys to fight and parents should not react so strongly. However, according to Huo Gong's Hang, the boy who fought with him was several years older than him and much taller and stronger than him. Even so, he knocked him down with just one punch. Perhaps the talent shown in that fight made his mother very worried, fearing that her son would cause more trouble in the future because of martial arts, so she issued a ban on martial arts to Huo Gong Gong. When Huo Gong Gong was in elementary school, his mother asked him to follow his father to learn medical skills. At the age of 18, Huo Gong Gong came to the first crossroads in his life. At this moment, there were two paths in front of him. One was to go to college like other children, the other was not to go to college and go directly to his father's clinic to practice medicine. Just when Huo Gong Gong didn't know what to choose, Yi Shui Niang stood up and chose the second path for her son, which was to practice medicine. Facts show that Yi Shui Niang made the right choice for her son. From then on, Huo Xiaozong gradually retired and let his son Huo Gongguang take charge of seeing patients. Huo Gongguang was very talented and could learn medical skills as soon as he learned them. After a while, he officially took over his father's class and smoothly inherited the Huo family's ancestral medical skills. In the following days, Mr. Huo has been combining modern medicine with the Huo family's inherited medical skills improving and innovating them. The medicinal wine that has been passed down from generation to generation in the Huo family was improved by him into a medicinal oil with better efficacy and higher cost effectiveness, which is especially popular with local patients. Mr. Huo not only mastered superb medical skills from his father, but also learned a lot of life principles. He is a very kind person and likes to make friends, so that he is not only famous in Surabaya, but also patients from abroad come to him. It is said that one year, the brother-in-law of an overseas Chinese suddenly suffered a cerebral hemorrhage and was still in danger after staying in the hospital for a week. Later, the overseas Chinese found Mr. Huo. Mr. Huo went to the hospital to see the patient, and then suggested that the overseas Chinese send his brother-in-law to him. The overseas Chinese took his brother-in-law to the clinic, and Mr. Huo used medicated oil to massage the patient, massaging from the head to the feet, back and forth many times. After many days, the patient's right foot could move miraculously. After a few days, the patient was able to walk normally. In 2010, the patient was still alive and well. Guang's Han Huo was a skilled doctor and very busy at work, which led to him not settling his lifelong affairs until he was 32 years old. Years of hard work have allowed Guang's Han Huo to accumulate a lot of wealth. According to relevant domestic media reports, Guang's Han Huo now lives in a large house in the city center with a construction area of more than 1,000 square meters. The house is not only well equipped, but also employs six servants, including drivers, doormen, gardeners, nannies, and wet nurses, all of whom do their own work. So, among the descendants of the Huo family, Guang's Han Huo should be the most wealthy. Thank you for watching the video, please leave your opinion in the comments section. Don't forget to press the channel subscription button. If this is the first time you watch a video on the channel,